Hello everyone, welcome to this week's Running Through Podcast, mini podcast. My name is Justin Horniker, and what I want to talk about today is will there be track and field in 2020? Now, with sports returning in the general landscape, the Bundesliga just started back up last week playing empty, empty stadium games. Pretty interesting when you think about it. Everyone's coming back. Social distancing is enforced on the sidelines. No crowds in the stands would give a really interesting environment. You don't hear the crowd noise, but you hear the coaches shouting instructions. You hear the players shouting back and forth. It's uh, kind of eerie in the grand scheme of things. The like really strange thing is you have players sitting two meters apart from each other on the sidelines, everyone wearing masks, yet you have full contact play going on in the field. And no high fives, only elbow touching when you celebrate. I'm wearing my FC St. Pauli shirt today in commemorative commemoration for the Bundesliga being back. However, that kind of amps up talks of other sports sports leagues coming back as well. The Premier League announced today that they will resume training this week. NHL and NBA are very aggressively talking return to play from pods, these pod cities, these hub cities of groups of teams clustering, playing games, playing through the playoffs and relocating and self-quarantining and those. Which me, being someone in the track and field world, someone who has contact in the track and field community, really gets me wondering of when track and field will come back. Obviously, track and field doesn't have the resources that, say, a league like the NBA has, but one thing it does have in its advantage is it's a cheap sport to put on. It has a relatively low hanging amount of money that it needs to put on a track meet. There aren't a ton of people in these big organizations that you need to really locate and get together. There's a lot of organization there, but it's definitely not to the level that you would need if you were, say, the Premier League or the NBA or the NHL. You have a couple meets that usually are relatively low key. People are used to putting on, and being a meet director is disorganized anyway. Now you just have to organize it in a different way. So it's relatively easy to organize compared to other bigger sports. That's one of the things that's going for it. The other is that low cost of overhead it takes to put on a track meet. One of the advantages a track might have now as well is that if it can come back before the other major sports, a lot of television companies are looking for sports content. One of the things that these smaller meets have is if they can be USATF sanctioned, USATF has a really close relationship with NBC. So potentially you could be talking about a smaller meet being put on NBC Sports Gold, the Olympic Channel, or even NBC Sports, getting eyeballs and exposure that these meets won't usually have, being on Float Track or USA TF TV, for instance. I know some people working with Music City Distance Carnival have been talking with ESPN, and there's possibility that they are going to get USA TF sanctioned. Because Tennessee right now has relatively lax guidelines compared to elsewhere in the U.S. and elsewhere in the world. So, let's talk about the general organization. So, the Diamond League has announced their guidelines, right? They're going to have meets at the end of July, August, in September, and the October UG meet. However, only athletes from those regions will be able to compete in those meets. So in the meet in France, for instance, it will only be able to host athletes who are currently in France, Italy, Germany, surrounding countries. There won't be traveling in between continents, definitely won't be air travel, unless you're willing to self-quarantine for a while, (laughs) really risk losing fitness, and probably not be able to race again after that. So you're talking about these really self-sustained Diamond League meets that are going to see a really watered down competition, which puts the USA at a big advantage because the UG meet will most likely just be US based athletes, maybe Canadian athletes. I'm not sure how that border crossing issue will be at this point, but athletes coming from Canada, I'm thinking of Andre Degrassi, athletes like that, Brandon McBride should have relatively easier, you know, just drive across the border. And coming from Canada to the U.S., there isn't that self-quarantine rule like there is going from the U.S. to Canada. So, potentially you can see Canadian athletes as well, is what I'm trying to say. But, with my work with Eastern Track League, 
we've been trying to figure out something to have some sort of domestic circuit. So outside of the Diamond League meet, what we will have are a couple meets in Tennessee at the end of August, most likely. These real simple two-hour meets, mostly mid-distance racing, that will essentially be the de facto USATF championships because there will be no USATF championships. There will be no California meets that a lot of times the USATF puts money into, such as the Oxy High Performance meet. Pen Relays is canceled, delayed. Drake Relays is canceled. So that leads a real opening, a real void that these smaller meets can step into. These smaller meets that are really focused on one event. We could potentially see a sprint meet come up as well. We've seen kind of these backyard challenges that World Athletics is putting out in terms of pole vaulting. But it leaves those voids that these smaller distance focused events can put on a nice, succinct meet, quick moving meet. You don't have a lot of setup time because there isn't this switching in and out from different disciplines, which as a track and field fan at whole, you kind of miss out on. But It'll be interesting to see how this works and how we can evolve from this process and maybe take some things we learned into other years when we aren't in the middle of a global pandemic. So there will be track and field. I feel pretty extremely confident after my conversations with people in the industry today that we will have track and field in 2020. However, it will look very different than what we used to. That is if you're not used to having no people in the stands. <laughs> So here are the guidelines. There will be no people in the stands. It has to be an empty stadium. There will be, you'll only be allowed in the stadium for one hour before your race and one hour after. You will need a COVID test in order to race. There will only be eight people per event. Keep it nice and small, nice and compact. Ease in, ease out. Now, what you do need to figure out is how are you going to control travel to these meets? What is that going to look like? So there are a couple things. This is obviously assuming that nothing gets out of control again, that everything is somewhat under control as far as the COVID numbers go. Luckily, Tennessee has been hit relatively safely. Now, can go on and on about if that's testing numbers or if that is the response from the state. But that is neither here nor there, nor is that the point of this video. So you will also need to take in mind that this is focused on USATF sanctioning as well. So those are the big things. There will probably be, probably be a meet, probably be some other things. Also the opportunity for this to be on ESPN or be on NBC actual channels that you can watch on TV, which will be huge for track and field. So that if we can take advantage of this time of relatively lax content standards, content preparation, and put on a nice, swift, polished programming, potentially one of some new fans being in a position that track and field hasn't been in in a really long time. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. A nice, short, sweet update podcast I'll have a little bit more on the actual audio podcast, but I want to keep this video nice and short. Let me know if you have any questions or concerns down in the comments. I don't want to reveal, I can't put a cement date down yet because it's not for certain because it's still pending a couple of things and I don't want to give away too much, get myself in trouble. But it's good things to look forward to. And hopefully we'll have a little series out of it, a little bit of friendly competition out of it and go from there. If you like this video, if you like my information, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more videos like it, and I'll talk to you guys very soon.